Hello guys, today we discuss about the liver failure. Physiological changes associated with the liver disease. Impaired of liver function has consequently directly attributable to the failed liver and also indirect effects expressed with the organ disease systems. Multi organ dysfunction results from the impaired of hormone modulation, activation of cytokines released was a vas active substance, and then cleared by products of metabolism by the damaged liver. Cardiovascular hemodynamic changes. Advanced liver disease produces a hyperdynamic circulation. Low systemic vascular resistance results from peripheral vasodilatation cardiac output increase in an attempt to compensate. This often leads to hypertension. Adrenal insufficiency is common as contributes to hemodynamic compromise. They may also be associated cardiomyopathy, for example, as a result from alcohol consumption or hemochromatosis. The low systemic vascular resistance may mask underlying cardiomyopathy or coronary artery disease by limiting ventricular overload. Anesthesia may unmask these processes. Respiratory changes. Ascites leads to diaphragmatic splinted along with pleural effusion. This is mechanically impaired of respiratory reduce functional residual capacity and promotes atelectasis and hypoxia. Intrapulmonary artery dosis shunting may occur along with impaired hypoxic vasoconstriction and ventilation perfusion (VQ) mismatching. This leads to hypoxemia and finger clumping over time. Acute respiratory distress syndrome arts may acute with or without sepsis in patients with advanced liver disease. Some patients may have portopulmonary hypertension where portal hypertension is accompanied by pulmonary hypertension and increased pulmonary vascular resistance, where no other cause for this pulmonary hypertension is identifiable, it is termed hepatopulmonary syndrome. Renal dysfunction. Hemodynamic derangement in the chronic liver disease can result in renal dysfunction secondary to hyperperfusion. The concurrent use of diuretics, nephrotoxic agents, large volume parasites, sepsis, and blood loss further increase this risk. Renal failure is all common in acute liver failure, whether due to the regional insult as a parasitable poison causing acute tubular necrosis or due to the development of hepatorenal syndrome. Hepatorenal syndrome is the reduced GFR consequent decline in renal function caused by advanced liver disease. This often occurs in conjunction with the multiple other pathologic can affect renal function. Hepatorenal syndrome can be defined as creating more 133 melamonin patients with the cirrhosis and the sites that persist one or other pathological having excluded or treated. It is consequence of the physiologic changes that take place, generalized vasodilatation irritation or altered renal angiogenesis and AGC release. These changes result in renal hyperperfusion secondary to hypertension in hypervolibia, deterioration to rapid in type 1 and slow in type 2. The use of renal support is controversial and no consequence has been reached. Each individual case should be judged on its own merits. Erythritis and renal. There are numerous causes of renal impaired and liver failure, including hepatorenal syndrome, sepsis and renal angiotensin activation. Hypernatremia due to water retention and inhibition of brain bound natricale atefas, hyperalbuminemia and adebe are common. Saline should be avoided by hypermagnesibia and hypophosphatebia should be corrected. Hematological changes. Anemia may be, may be present secondary to blood loss. Hemolysis from hypersplenis, anemia or chronic illness bone marrow depression or nutritional deficiency. Coagulopathy is one of the primary features of advanced liver disease 
with the liver having a central role in the synthesis of all almost coagulation factors. Coagulation defects reflect failure of hepatic synthesis function, malnutrition of vitamin K, malabsorption. Hepatocellular necrosis produces a prolongation in protrobin time. The short half of closure factors means that protrobin time can be reliable used to monitor the severity of hepatic injury. Dysfibrinogenia and fibrinolysis may occur in particular with alcohol-related cirrhosis. Polter hypertension leads to splenomegalia, which results in platelet sequestration and thrombocytopenia. Changes in drug handling There is considerable derangement in drug handling. The etiology of liver dysfunction may impact on pharmacokinetics and hepatocellular damage can alter drug metabolism. Holistasis reduces the absorption of fat-soluble drugs after oral administration. Reduced hepatic extraction can lead to high peak plasma concentrations. Compactment changes and altered protein binding affect the volume of distribution, clearance and the distributions. Drugs with a high extraction ratio, such as morphine, petidine and propionol, rely on hepatic blood flow, hence these drugs should have a dosage decrease but not a decrease in frequency of dosing. Drugs with a low extraction ratio, such as benzodiazepine, warfarin, and theophylline, depend on metabolic capacity of the liver and should have the dosing interval lessened by no dose reduction. Infection risk. Acute liver failure patients often fulfill the criteria of systemic inflammatory response syndrome (SIRS), even when infection is not present. There is a substantial increase in the risk of sepsis, however, due to impaired oxygenation, hematoxis, and intracellular killing. Gram-positive organisms and fungal sepsis are common. A sepsis for invasive procedures must be scrupulous. Metabolic dysfunction Secondary hyperaldosteronism leads to water retention and hypernatremia, further exacerbation of cities and peripheral edema. Loop diuretics used to treat ascites and edema can cause relative hypovolemia and hypokalemia. Spironolactone may lead to hyperkalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypophosphatemia, and metabolic alkalosis are often present. Rapid correction of hyponatremia can lead to osmotic demyelinization and central point in myelinosis. Hormone levels can be affected by reduction in beta transformation, reduced production of modular proteins and reduced protein binding. This results in increased circulation levels of hormones such as insulin, thyroxine, aldosterone and estrogen. Hyperglycemia may be present due to both hyperinsulinemia and depleted hepatic glycogen stores. Lactic acidose may occur particularly in paracetamol overdose. And of course neurological problems. Mechanism leading to deep in encephalopathy, loss of vascular autoregulation, cerebral edema and death are incompletely understood. A number of procedures may act in parallel but can be summarized as accumulation of neurotoxic compounds, penetration and impaired blood-brain barrier. At the same time, lack of nutrients and substrates may impair brain metabolism and alter neurotransmitter synthesis. Of particular interest are a group of endogens and, and the disciplin like substance that are thought to act as site closely linked to the G amino butric aids, its GABA receptors. Drosiness can be intrinsically reversed by flumazenil, but not in all cases. Symptoms can occur in chronic as well as in inaccurate disease, may be rapid at onset and may be precipitated by a gastrointestinal bleed, dietary protein overload or sepsis. Somnolence can be exacerbated by sedative drugs and narcotics. Rapid correction of hyponatremia can lead to osmotic demyelinization and central pontine myelinosis and should be avoided. And of course remember classification of liver disease, child A, B and C. The child park classification system used for chronic liver failure. Encephalopathy, a size absent B 
bilirubin, albumin, and of course uh, liver failure, and motor presentation, and survival. What we can see presentation, encephalopathy, and of course survival rate. And that's all for today. Take care of yourself. Be healthy and be happy.